evening, everyone. I am Dr. Vineet Quatra. I am basically working with the uh, uh, Medanta Hospital as a senior consultant pediatrics, and I have been working with Fortis Lafem and other Paris hospitals in Gurgaon. Now, see, the topic is very huge: neonatal emergencies. So I will try to make it short, sweet, and understandable to everybody, so so that we can take up your questions also uh, as the uh, pro as we progress with the slides. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, so what are we going to learn? Now, let's see. Now, first of all, we have to understand what are neonates. Now, neonates are basically babies who are uh, between birth to one month of age and preterm infants within 30 days of their term due age. So normally we understand that uh, babies, uh, these emergencies uh, are not very uncommon problems. You have to understand that they appeared either at the time of birth, that is number one, during the in-hospital stay after birth, that is number two, and at home with several weeks after discharge. So we have to understand that. So these are the three categories which we found find in newborns or neonates that come to the emergency. Now. In all these instances, they present with a significant diagnostic and treatment challenges, which we really have to uh, cater to and diagnose and really treat them in a proper way. Now, uh, let's see how we recognize an approach to a critical ill unit. So, as we all know, the first and the foremost important thing to look into is the clinical history. That is a crucial diagnosis for a neonatal emergency. Now, before we go, like I told you, the newborns are basically uh, from birth till one month of age. So we basically have to check for a prenatal cause, a perinatal cause and a postnatal history, whether the child was basically a preterm or a term. If the child was term, whether the baby was uh, did require a neonatal resuscitation at birth, what was the hospital stay for the baby, uh, whether the baby required any ventilation after the birth, whether the baby had jaundice or not, what was the situation of the mother before birth, whether the mother was having any fever or not uh, before or during the time of delivery. So all these things have to be noted, whether it was a forceps delivery or whether it was a vacuum delivery or whether it was basically a normal delivery. So all these things have to be kept in mind uh, before we go ahead and go with the pediatric emergencies, neonatal emergencies. Next, the prolonged rupture of membranes and perinatal maternal fever, like I already discussed, prematurity and low birth weight are the one of the major factors of infant mortality in our country. Now, uh, one, of, one of you which I missed was Abgar score, resuscitation at birth, weight gain in the first week, whether the baby has been passing urine adequately or not, uh, how many times the baby has passed motion after birth, what is the feeding pattern, uh, so all these things are to be uh, taken up in the history before we really go ahead with the further management and care of a neonatal emergency. Now, once we are with the history, now we come to the physical examination. So the physical examination, we have to go with the PAT. You know, what is PAT? PAT is pediatric assessment tool that goes with the neonatal pediatric assessment tool also. So once a baby lands up in the emergency, what has to be looked after? It is the appearance of a baby, whether the baby is appearing cyanotic or asynotic, whether this, the tone is normal or abnormal, whether the baby is interactive or not, is the baby continuously irritable, continuously crying, whether the baby has been able to be consoled when the baby is in mother's womb, or sorry, mother's uh, this, and uh, whether the baby is having a normal look or the baby is having a persistent gaze, and what is the cry, whether the baby is having a shrill cry or the cry is normal. So that comes under the appearance. So the first thing, when the baby enters the emergency, please go and look into the appearance of a baby. That gives you a point that has to be taken up before we go ahead with further things. Next is circulation to the skin. That basically, like I told you, pallor, mottling, cyanosis. Now in newborns, we have to understand that we have to check for the CFT. CFT is capillary function test. The normal CFT for a baby is less than three seconds. So if you find that the baby is having more than a CFT of more than three seconds, that means the baby is in trouble. If there is mottling of skin, all you are finding is the baby is having cyanosis. Now, if the baby is having cyanosis, you have to understand whether this cyanosis is related with respiratory emergencies or a cardiac emergency. 
so that has to be taken care which we will discuss later on the next we come is work of breathing now work of breathing obviously we all know tachypnea we we know uh, increase work of breathing the normal respiratory rate of a newborn is around about 40 to 60 breaths per minute if we find that the baby is having tachypnea retractions are there intercostal subcostal retractions are there nasal flaring is there the baby is having apnea or not the saturation check for the saturation and everything and the most important is check whether the baby is gasping or not so that is these three things are main in physical examination once the baby lands up in the emergency now let's come to physical examination the first and the foremost thing airway breathing circulation that we have already discussed the normal respiratory rate i told you 40 to 60 breaths per minute and uh, we, the physician should basically verify that the patient uh, the patient is having adequate ventilation or oxygenation or not uh, any abnormal sounds like i told you snoring grunting strider audible wheeze or any abnormal sounds in the chest which basically is associated with the work of breathing or with nasal uh, uh, flaring retraction subcostal intercostal retraction and paradoxical chest movements they all have to be looked into circulation i'll just go through very fast so circulation hydration status capillary refill time which i told you and the heart rates whether there is tachycardia or bradycardia which has to be taken care of now i have discussed the normal neonatal heart rate is 120 to 160 beats per minute with a average systolic blood pressure which we take is 60 to 90 and of hg remember one thing a child who is coming in shock you will never find hypotension as an early sign so just remember this thing don't expect that the child is will have an hypotension whenever the child lands up in the emergency in shock now let's come to the we have done physical now we come to systemic evaluation like i told you uh, the impression is pat which is pediatric assessment tool uh, go with the appearance respiratory efforts and circulation of the skin which you have already discussed then evaluation of airway breathing circulation disability and exposure now they are the normally in pediatric we see a b and c here we have a b c d and e so this is what has to be taken care of check for the vital signs place the cardiac monitor put the pulse oximeters and do check the blood glucose level as soon as the sick baby lands up in the emergency and an abg which i have missed if abg is not possible then get a vbg done to just check whether it is a respiratory acidosis or a metabolic acidosis immediately when the baby lands up in the emergency and you find that the baby is critical the first and the foremost thing after you put all these monetary supports and all those things please start the oxygen by a high flow oxygen mask just to revert the hypoxic insult which the baby may be going ahead with now to go further if there is no peripheral intravenous line then at least try for an intraosseous line and if the baby is in hospital and if the baby has got an umbilical uh, stump which is there do put up a umbilical catheter immediately if the peripheral intravenous line is not available then uh, we all know uh, uh, just start with the saline bolus which will be 5 to 10 ml per kg and then check for the signs of perfusion and vitals again now uh, like a, like we went with the uh, blood sugar levels we know that the normal glucose for a baby is 40 mg per deciliter if you find that the if the blood sugar level is low then you have to treat accordingly which will come later okay now this is a very interesting mnemonic which has been made for neonatal emergencies which is the misfits okay uh, the is t is trauma which can be accidental and non accidental h is the heart disease hypovolemia or hypoxia which uh, involves the respiratory diseases also respiratory emergencies also E is endocrine, which includes the congenital adrenal hyperplasia as well as thyrotoxic, metabolic. We all know hypocalcemia, hypoglycemia, which can lead to seizures, involuntary metabolism, uh, sepsis, which can lead to septic shock, meningitis, pneumonia, UTI, formula mishaps, intestinal catastrophes, which may be intussusceptions, your uh, gastric volvulus, your uh, NECs, toxin, poisons, and last is the seizures.